Are you unsure on how to use some of these new Pokemon competitively? Well, allow me to lend you a helping hand. We're just gonna Earthquake here and it's gonna win us the game. So again, Dondozo, if it gets in position, it can just literally sweep and win a game. It's so incredibly strong. Okay guys, so today we're going over Dondozo and this is arguably one of the strongest Pokemon in all of Gen 9. Dondozo has a very unique and interesting mechanic when it's paired with Tatsugiri. So Tatsugiri has an ability named Commander. Commander will make it jump inside of Dondozo's mouth, giving it plus two into all of its stats. A plus two Omni Boost on your stats is a very, very big deal, making Dondozo very, very hard to take down and quite meta-defining. Now, of course, Tatsugiri will be in the mouth, so it won't actually exist on the field. It is a 2v1, but it is pretty much a raid boss scenario when Dondozo is very, very strong. So each color of Tatsugiri is a different form that gives a different boost with the move order up on Dondozo. The orange one is known as the curly variant, and this one gives you a plus one to attack when you use order up when Tatsugiri is in your mouth. The pink one is known as droopy, which will give you a defense buff if you use order up with the Tatsugiri in your mouth. And the yellow one is known as stretchy, which will give you a speed buff. So depending on which Tatsugiri you use with your Dondozo, you'll get a different boost off the move order up. Now I'm not going to go into Tatsugiri's movesets much today, I will be using one in a team later in the video when I do show off Dondozo and how it works. I'll get into Tatsugiri more in the how to use Tatsugiri video, this one is going to be focused more on Dondozo itself. Now there are a lot of sets that people use for Dondozo and they're all very very good. It's very hard to go wrong with this Pokemon, I'll go through them and as I said we'll play some games with one of these sets and I'll be able to show you how the Pokemon actually works. Let's take a little dive into Dondozo's stats and they're pretty ridiculous. So remembering that all of these are getting a plus two boost, that is the number you see here will be doubled. So. Having 150 base HP is a really big deal, it's a really beefy Pokemon. That's 65 special defense, it's not very much, but with just a tiny bit of investment, that doubled with such a high HP stat is really going to make you survive a lot of hits. Especially with that big defense, Dondozo is really hard to take down. Getting essentially huge power as well, doubling that attack stat makes you hit really really hard as well. The base speed of 35 is pretty low, but when you have this maxed out, you outspeed pretty prominent Pokemon because again, you're at plus two. It's like having a Tailwind without needing to set Tailwind. You are a water type Pokemon, which is really good. Water is a really good typing. It's great offensively, and it's only weak to both grass and electric. Water is probably one of the strongest typings in the game, and having a really strong Pokemon with that typing makes it such a dominant force. Now, all of the abilities are amazing. Water Veil is incredible. You can't be burned. Oblivious is amazing. You can't be intimidated. But unaware is what you should probably use 99.99% of the time. Unaware means that you ignore other Pokemon stat changes. That's really good. That means that if you're going up against another Dondozo, they're not plus two in your eyes. That's really important for the mirror match and it really helps you against a lot of Pokemon as well. If an Annihilate is trying to bulk up against you, it, it doesn't matter. The defense and attack stat boosting isn't actually noticed by you because you're unaware. So it's pretty, pretty solid. And I'll get into the sets now. This one is probably the most common one you'll see on the ladder. It's the max speed Jolly with almost max attack and then a few stats spread in between these. Now, the reason these little stats kind of add up is again, you're doubling your stats. So this 87 is being doubled, this 136. So getting the extra one or two points does make a difference because it is again, more than one or two points when it's doubled. Now the Terra type on Dondozo is so incredibly diverse. You could literally run almost anything. Dragon gives you a stab on order up. It is a dragon type move, but you can honestly run grass. Most people do run grass. You see a lot of flying. You see a lot of steel. You see some fairy. You see some stay with water and do bigger wave crash. Some go ground to get bigger earthquakes. It's honestly just kind of what your team needs. And Dondozo is probably one of the most diverse Terra type Pokemon. Now, when it comes to the moves, there's some pretty cool sets as well. Now, Order Up is almost a staple. Some people don't run it. And I'll get to a set that doesn't have it. But Order Up is really amazing. As I said, you're getting that plus one boost. It's base 80 power. And it's a pretty strong move coming up that doubled 300 over here attack stat. So you're hitting pretty hard. Earthquake is amazing because as I said, you're in that 1v2 situation. So you really want to have a spread move that can hit both of the opponent's Pokemon because that way you don't feel so over, like, over pressured and you can kind of fight back in the outnumbered battle. Wave Crash is here because uh, base power of 120 with stab with these stats hits so incredibly hard. Oh, where to go? 
Wave Crash is just a really, really strong move to run. And Leftovers is great because it will help you win the Dozo matchup every single time if they don't have one. And it also just helps you stay on the field longer because that's kind of what this Pokemon wants to do. Once you commit to having Dozo and Giri together, you can't switch them out. So you want them to last as long as humanly possible. Now, as I've said, you can opt to change the Terra to something like Flying and run Terra Blast instead of something like uh, Earthquake, which some people do tend to do. Terra Blast is really strong at hitting those Grass types, especially those Terra Grass Dozos you see running around. So this is a really cool option. It hits things like Skeledurge that wall you pretty well, and a lot of these unaware Pokemon running around that choose to Terra Grass. Substitute is probably one of the strongest moves on this Pokemon, and I highly recommend it. A lot of people will try to whittle you down with things like Leech Seed. That doesn't matter if you're behind a Substitute. You don't have to worry about a Moongus Spores. You don't have to worry about getting burned. You can kind of just stay behind a Substitute pretty safe. And because you're so incredibly bulky with these doubled stats, it's really hard to break that Substitute. Not to mention, you are getting some pretty good recovery with those leftovers behind that sub. Some people do tend to run sub and protect on the same set, giving you a lot of stall and recovery and just makes you really safe, which I, I can see working really well. It has worked for some people. I do tend to like the three attack though, because things like this, I, I ended up making some like Terra Fairy Rotoms and they just walled this set completely and I wasn't able to get moves off. So I uh, started with the Earthquake and you don't really want to give up a spread move unless it's for something really specific to hit things. So while this set is really good and it can work, be aware a lot of things can wall you. Now there's also the Adamant sets. Now Adamant sets are really, really good. Having base 84 here, it looks so slow. But don't forget, your speed is doubled. You you outspeed base 100, Jolly or Timbered max speed Pokemon with this 84, which is crazy. So you're still quite fast and pretty relevant when it comes to speed tiers. Not to mention that you have the same attack as I think this is maxed out. Um, let's put let's put these down to see just to double check. But I'm pretty sure yeah, maxed out maxed out Jolly is the same as here as just 148 into here. Uh, with an adamant nature, allowing you to get a bit more bulk out of it. So this is a tankier Dondozo that's a little bit slower, but still outspeeds a lot of relevant Pokemon, but yeah, it has a lot more bulk and it hits just as hard. So it's really, really solid. And this is essentially the same kind of thing when it comes to the moves, but the spread is just a little different, giving you that option to be a little bulkier. Now there's also this option here. We have that speed of outspeeding the 100. You're not as bulky. You do have essentially like, you know, pretty similar bulk to this. But you have an absurd amount of attack here. 167 being doubled is quite a lot and you smack incredibly hard. And these sets here sometimes don't run order up. They run the sub protect with a wave crash and earthquake. Because you have such a high attack stat already, you don't really need those extra plus one boosts. And you can just dominate through the enemy teams with really strong wave crashes and earthquakes. And this is a set that's really good. I really do quite like this. It's more just getting things out quickly and it's a bit more hyper offense which I really kind of like for a Pokemon like this. Now, another set here that I really like is the Rest and Sleep Talk set. This thing is really annoying. As I said, it is kind of walled by those Rotoms, but you really don't see Terra Fairy Rotom too often. It's just something I was building to kind of specifically counter this. But with the rise of all these other Dozos, you won't really see them at all. It, it just makes them really not worth it. So Rest and Sleep Talk is amazing because you can stay on the field almost forever with Dozo. And Order Up will give you a lot of boost and Earthquake will be good spread damage. This is a really good set that's hard to deal with. You get burnt, it doesn't matter, you rest it up. They Leech Seed you, it doesn't matter you're resting up and recovering way more than they can do to you. And if the opponent can't KO you in two turns, you can store them out really hard with this set. It, it's a really good one. You're still very, very strong. And yeah, I highly recommend trying this one out as well. It's a jolly max speed one. You want to get fast rests off. And yeah, I, I really quite like this as well. Now let's get into the single set. And the single set here is really interesting. It's more of a defensive tank. You can't have Tatsugiri with you in singles. So you're not going to have the doubled stats, but even without the doubled stats, singles here played at 100 um, and 50 in the Battle Stadium singles. To be fair, in the games, so this would be what you'd run in the game. Uh, heavy Duty Boots is great for switching into rocks. If you're not worried about hazards, you can, of course, run leftovers, but I highly recommend uh, Heavy Duty Boots uh, as well. And it's essentially just rest and sleep talk because that's the only reliable recovery you can really have. Reliable in quotations there when it comes to rest, not the most reliable recovery. Sleep Talk allows you to attack while asleep, and Body Press and Liquidation are really good coverage moves. Now, Liquidation coming off a base 100 attack is really solid, and Body Press off that 115 defense max out to 183 here is really, really strong. Now, you can obviously do other things. You can, you can put the HP down and go like this, and this is a more well-rounded tank because you have such a high HP stat that investing into the Special Defense would give you a lot of bulk. And you could also go this way to go completely into the special defense. I don't know if I'd rather, um, run body press here. I mean, you, you really could. It really doesn't matter. But you can run something like heavy slam. I believe it's heavy slam, right? Yeah, because you do weigh a lot or a lot of moves, really earthquake, curse, the setup is an option. There's a lot of different options with Nodnozo. 
And I think it's a really, really strong Pokemon. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab one of these sets and I'm going to jump into a game and I'm going to show you how it works here in this video. So stay tuned for that. Don't go anywhere. I'll go quickly through the team and I'll have some fun here with you guys. Okay, so I've put together a very, very rushed team. We've got the Dondosa set here, which is the Adamant one that outspeeds base 100 with the bulk. That's one I want to try out today. I've got a Scarf Tatsugiri with Taunt in case we need it. Uh, Draco, Icy Wind and Muddy Water. I've got the Amoongus here with Clear Smog for other Dondozos and just, you know, the redirection because it can help us with some other strategies I've got here in, the, in this team as well. Got Miascarada because it's a very strong Pokemon, opting for Overgrow over Protean because I'm only using moves that we already have Stab on anyway and getting into the Overgrow passive will give us a lot more damage on the Flower Trick because we have the Sash and that's a reliable strategy we can kind of work with. We have the Serilodge here with Bulk Up, Bitter Blade, Shadow Sneak. Uh, and it's a Terra Grass, and next that we have the Grim Snarl for screens to help that kind of set off with the Amoongus. So this is going to be something pretty cool to try out. And we've got the Dozo here that can either, you know, come in late and clean everything up or start off strong and wipe the enemy team down. So I'll see you guys in the first game. Okay, here's the first game, and we're going up against a Haze Murkrow, which is really annoying and something this team doesn't really want to particularly deal with because it just gets rid of Dondozo's stats. It's probably the biggest counter in the metagame to Dondozo, and it's pretty tough to play around, but we're going to do what we can here, and I think leading with um with Serilege and uh, Grimmsnarl could be fairly decent, and I'm going to run the Dozo and Gear in the back because we're trying to showcase them, so I've kind of got to bring them to every game. They didn't lead with the Murkrow. I don't know if Murkrow's in the back. Um, Interesting strat. I don't see a reason for me to not uh, actually bulk up here and set up my own uh, Reflect. Uh, because if they final Gambit, they can't hit Serilege. Um, and if they bulk up, then like, you know, I'm fine with taking this bulk up trade. Yeah, taking out Grimmsnarl's fine. I've got my Reflect up. Maybe we should have light screened. It's gotten the Trick Room off. Is Arm Rouge coming in here? Is that their strategy? Is their strategy to go with Arm Rouge? Um, what's cool here is I can go into Dozo and go into Geary in the other slot, or I can go into Geary now and bring Dozo. I think I'll go into Dozo. Because it is fairly slow at the moment. And yeah, there's the Armor Rouge. So, I think, honestly, my best play is to just go into Geary now and try to kind of come back here. I feel like the best thing for me to do, they're going to likely follow me. So, I guess I Earthquake. Uh, they could Wide Guard. Hmm, I, I don't want them to, like, Wide Guard and go Murkrow. I, I want to Wave Crash into the uh, Armor Rouge slot. I want to go for just the guaranteed damage. Um, and if they follow me, they follow me. They did follow me. Maybe, yeah, maybe I should have Earthquaked. We don't take too much off that. We're going to take a fair bit of recoil, though, because we're going to KO them. Um, and Murkrow may come in here. Oh, it's Serilege. Oh. I think we survived the double up, and we Earthquake here. Now, they could be Wide Guard. Um, we survived that. They go for the Swords Dance. And yeah, Dozo, as I said, is very tanky, and here's the Earthquake. They have that spread move. And yeah, I think they forfeit. That's going to be game one. So Dozo is really strong, and you have to respect it. Um, my lead wasn't too great. I didn't really expect what they brought. I really thought Murkrow was coming, but hey, it worked out and Dozo kind of paid off. I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, so into this next game. This is interesting. Electros. I love Electros and Flareon. Um, I'm scared of teams like this because I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do. I'm kind of tempted to just lead the Dozo, but I don't want to get like just Grim So maybe, maybe my lead is, um... Is Grimmsnarl Miascarada, because I do have the Sash and then the Geary Dondozo in the back. So yeah, this works out pretty well for me. This works out pretty well. I'm going to light screen into a uh, knockoff into the Gengar slot. I don't see a reason not to. I really don't. I do have my Sash. If they double into me, that's fine. I mean, I'll still get them down to their Sash and be in a really, really good spot. So see what uh, Gengar's going to do here. It's probably Sash. Yeah, Gengar Sash. And then Grimmsnarl. Play roughs into my Grimmsnarl. Play rough Grimmsnarl. Play rough Grimmsnarl, that's a thing. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting. I'm gonna reflect and I'm gonna sucker punch the Gengar in case it wants to go for an attacking move because um, I'd rather just get rid of it. Yeah, we do, there we go, Gengar's gone. And yeah, if they get rid of my uh, my Grimmsnarl here, then that's not actually the worst because I go into my Dozo. I have both my screens up um, and they go into their T-Tar. But if I just, can I just wave crash T-Tar? <laughs> I mean, maybe I'll order up in case they're Terra Flying because they could be Terra Flying. So I think I'm gonna, I'm going to order up the T-Tar and bring in the Geary. So we'll see what happens here. I'm going to order up the T-Tar in case they're Terra Flying or Terra Grass or just something absurd that's going to annoy me. They're Terra Flying. So, all right, yeah, because they, they likely survive, especially with the Curse. Interesting, Curse T-Tar. Curse T-Tar. Okay, so we're um we're unaware, so that doesn't actually matter. <laughs> but yeah, Curse T-Tar. So order up did how much? Order up did about 23. We got an extra plus one. 
We're definitely not going to KO it um, this turn, but I don't see a reason to not just, like, you know, order up into it again. There's a Rock Slide. It's not going to do very much to us at all. There's the Play Rough. Not, not much at all. There's the Order Up. Pretty big damage for us right there. And what I think I might actually do is just, yeah, I'm going to ignore the Grim Snarl, and I'm going to order up again. I don't see a reason to not order up here. And we're just getting really, really strong. Yeah, Crunch did absolutely nothing. Play Rough, nothing again. Um, honestly, I could have sub I could have substituted any time here, but I may as well just like, you know, go on the sweep here. Because Trick Room ends in one turn, is over now, and now we have the speed advantage. Golden Go is definitely slower than us. And Earthquake is just really, really safe here. So Earthquake is going to be big damage. We are plus a million. Uh, they live behind the Reflect. The Nasty Plum, which is so greedy. That was so greedy. There's the player off. Um, yeah, we're just going to Earthquake here, and it's going to win us the game. So again, Dondozo, if it gets in position, it can just literally sweep and win a game. It's so incredibly strong. Uh, I do like this bulkier set. I definitely should just be subbing more, but I'm just kind of playing on the Hyper Offense, and I'm loving it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, we're versing Hail. Hail's actually pretty good into Dozo because of the defense buff it gets. The Guard of War. Oh, the Haze Murkrow. This is going to be a tough one to Dozo. I think what I'm honestly going to do though is I'm gonna lead the um I'm gonna lead the Grimmsnarl Serral Edge. And I'm gonna have the Dozo and Tatsugiri in the back. Now I really want to bring Masquerada as well. But I think that Serral Edge is very good in this matchup. And I also think that if they want to lead the Murkrow and Garchomp, it's my best bet. Okay, so they've led the snow. They've led snow. I'm completely okay with them leading snow because I even I don't think. They're going to get up the Veil <laughs> because they're going to be Sash. They're going to be Sash and get up the Veil. So they're likely going to like Terra Water Liquidation, but behind Reflect, I should definitely live that. Uh, so I'm going to probably Bitter Bleed into the uh, into the Bomber Snow slot because it's more of a threat. They protected. Yeah, I thought they were going to just Veil with a Sash or something. I should live this Liquidation. Yeah, I live this Liquidation every time. Uh, I might have to actually Terra Cross here. But if they Blizzard, that's kind of annoying. I guess I should have faked out. I don't know why I didn't fake out. I'm, I'm not used to running it myself on Grim Snow, I suppose. But yeah, I'll get the light screen up as well. I might have to Terra Grass just for the chip into a Bomber Snow. Uh, because I will definitely be faster than the Bomber Snow unless they're max speed, which would be very strange. But if they are, then I guess um, I guess rip to me. But I'm going to go for the Bitter Blade and try to heal up enough to just survive. Because I'll, I'll survive the Liquidation now very easily. And they should just heal me up. Yeah, it gets the KO completely and we heal up enough to just survive the next one. Um, and... Oh, they forfeited. Okay, the opponent's forfeited. So yeah, a Terra is really strong. <laughs> Going Terra Grass at the right moment can be really strong. Um, we'll play one more. That was going to be the last one, but Tatsugiri and Dozo didn't even come out. So I'll see you guys in the next game for the last one. Okay, so this opponent's got a really cool team. Okay, they've got the Dragalgy. Um, they've got the Hariyama. It's, it's definitely Trick Room. I'm 100% versing Trick Room. There is no way around that. I am versing a Trick Room team. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to lead... Um, Serral Edge and Grimmsnarl with these two in the back. The reason for... Oh, maybe not. I wonder if Sucker into Annihilate is better for like the later game to have a Sucker Puncher. We do have a Shadow Sneaker though, which could be a bit better. I think I think Serral Edge is just better in this game. Um, Yeah, because I don't think Final Gambit is going to do like what they want it to do in this matchup. Because I do have a Ghost type. I do have some priority to chip it down. So its health isn't going to be too bulky. So I can definitely play around that. I can definitely play around that. So let's see what they're going to do. Um turn one. I'm assuming it's going to be one of the uh, Trick Rumors. Bronzong with, oh, with the Harry Armor. Okay. This I'm okay with. This I'm okay with. I don't see a reason to not, so they could have knockoff. So I'm honestly going to, uh, I'm going to bulk up and I'm going to fake out the Bronzong so it can't get off a Trick Room this turn. I wonder what they're going to go for. They faked out. Okay, well, I'm faster, so my fake out's faster. So I'm going to have the bulk up and uh, <laughs> yeah, they're not in a spot they want to be in right now. They're definitely not the spot they want to be in. They could have knockoff. I'm wondering if Terra Grass right now is the best play because I won't uh, take anywhere near as much from knockoff and I can heal up really well with Bitter Blade. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think Reflect to make me not take too much damage. Yeah, see the Terra Dark as well. I'm so glad I made that play. So they're going to survive that, um, which is fine. And then yeah, there's the knockoff. Gets rid of my life for, but honestly, that's fine. Um, so now Shadow Sneak is definitely going to get rid of Bronzong. And Spirit Break into Hariyama is pretty good for me. Unless I want to, hmm. Maybe, yeah, I'll Protect and Spirit Break. I think that might be the better play. I do have the Reflect up, and I'm not really threatened by any special attacks. I hope they're not some... Uh, I really don't want annoying Gravity Hypnosis things. <laughs> so I kind of want to really get rid of the Bronzong. Um, I am going to go down to a Fighting move. That's the thing. Most likely, right? Oh, maybe not, actually. 
Maybe not. Let's just take this chance. Let's get rid of the Bronzong. No ignoring our gravity hypnosis things. Close combat. It dog oh, gets the crit. I may have survived that. I may have survived that. Knockoff only did 39. But yeah, so this is fine. We Sarah Ledge goes down. <laughs> we get the KO there. Dozo comes in. Here comes Dragalgi. So they've got Dragalgi and Hatterene. Um, what are they? How do they stop me just like subbing and going Geary? If I just get behind a sub with Geary, am I not in like a really good spot? I don't have a light screen up though. I don't have a light screen up. So, hmm. Maybe I just want to attack. Maybe sub's not the play. Maybe I just attack with Geary. I just go into Geary and I get the other boost immediately. And I just go straight for the Earthquake for the big damage because it's going to do a lot for me. There's a Gleam. Yeah, sub was definitely not the play with them doubling up into me here. Oh, it was though because we, we dodged with the Geary and now the big Earthquake. There's Dozo. And yeah, they're not going to be able to fight this uphill battle and they're going to surrender. So as you guys saw, Dozo is just one of those things. If the enemy team is not prepared for Don Dozo, it's going to win. It, it's that much of a force and that's why it's likely probably the best Pokemon in uh, re released in Gen 9 because of that combination. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it showed you how Don Dozo works. Leave comments. Let me know. I, I like to know what you guys think of the video. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.